All right, so here we are again, astronomy students in my backyard. The chickens are much more vocal tonight, so please pardon them. Um, tonight we're going to be discussing altitude and azimuth, and how exactly do you use these to find things in the sky? Hello, XO, be quiet. All right, the basics were covered in your PowerPoint and are very, very simple. The general idea is altitude, up and down, how many degrees above the horizon an object is. Azimuth is which way do I look? Do I look to the south? Do I look to the west? Do I look to the north? Do I look to the east? Where exactly do I look? We're going to begin with the azimuth. To determine the azimuth, we're just going to use a simple orienteering compass. I hope this focuses well for you. Right now, the, it is 8 p.m., a couple minutes after 8 on Saturday, September 4th, 2010. According to the Asings Planetarium, I should be able to find Venus right now. In the sky, Venus has an azimuth of basically 238 degrees. I don't know how well you can see this. 200, there we go. 238. If you have a compass like this, then what you're going to do is find 238 on the dial, which I'm sorry this is so blurry right now. It's basically right over here. You've got a pointer arrow on your compass right up here. You're going to spin the dial. You can see that white line in there. That's good. It's helpful. Spin it to 238. And then the red needle is always north. Basically on every compass you get the red needle is north. So now what we're going to do is hold this flat so the needle can spin. And we want to keep going until the red needle lines up with the red N here on the compass. See, this means I'd be looking in the wrong direction. Come on, compass. So if I look this, generally this way, I should be able to find Venus. Now the question is, how high up in the sky do we need to look? Now there are instruments that you can use for this. One of the instruments is called an astrolabe, a mariner's astrolabe. This is what mariners used to use to navigate out on the open oceans way back in the day. I'm going to teach you a simple method for measuring the altitude and finding the location of your object based simply on your body. The human body is proportioned very, very well. What happens is the width of your fist, if you hold your arm out. All right, here we go. Take your fist, close it, completely extend your arm all the way out. Bent elbows are going to give you not what you want, not an accurate measurement. Extend it all the way out. The width of your fist is 10 degrees of arc, 10 degree angle in the sky. Now, if you hold your arm out completely flat, completely level, that should be right at the top of your fist zero degrees, which is the altitude of the horizon at any point, no matter where you're looking. Uh, the true horizon. Now there might be trees or hillsides that block part of the true horizon. That's just the way life is. So we know we're looking roughly the right direction. Now the question is how high? Our altitude is roughly 18 degrees, so what I'm going to do, here's my zero, take my other fist, if I place it on top, that means that this is now 10 degrees above the horizon, this
this is 20 degrees above the horizon. So if I do this pointing in the right direction, I should be able to find the planet I'm looking for. at about that angle, I should be able to find Venus. And, sure enough, I don't know how well this will show up on the video camera, but there's Venus right there. It's coming in and out of focus because the camera has a hard time dealing with it, basically because of the twilight. Now let me show you one last little trick in case you need to measure something a little bit more precisely. Wait for the traffic. When you extend your arm, the width of your fist is 10 degrees. If you have just your pinky width at arm's length like this, the width of your pinky is one degree. So if you need to get really specific, you can go, you know, 10, 20, 30, all right, 31, 32, 33, and on up. You're also able to determine the size of the moon by using your pinky. The size of the moon should be basically about one half of a degree of arc. Coincidentally, the sun is the same size as the moon. So that means if you do this, your pinky should be twice as wide as either the moon or the sun. I suggest you try this with the moon next time we have a full moon. Obviously, do not try this with the sun. Well, astronomy students, that is the basics of altitude and azimuth and finding objects in the night sky. I hope you're able to use this successfully and find some planets and even constellations using this method. We've done this using a basic orienteering compass. You don't need one of these. You can use a compass out of a Cracker Jack box as long as you know generally what direction each number means in terms of north, south, east, west, northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest, etc. And again, that information is in the PowerPoint that you should have seen as part of your assignments for reading this week. Thank you, and have a great evening. I hope the skies are clear for you.